the fact that it has been such a point of contention that there are people that feel perfectly comfortable saying that they ought to get to, or someone in the government ought to be able to ask questions about your medical decisions and make them for you and mandate certain ones. That is the thing that is truly disturbing to me. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. The latest is about the vaccine mandate and how it has been affecting some local people. Apparently, Coach Brian Harson, the head coach of my beloved Auburn Tigers, the only team that I love as much as the Atlanta Braves, as you can see from my uh, vestige and my background there, Coach Brian Harson actually will not say whether or not he is vaccinated. And this has become something that has been something of a point of contention amongst people here recently, and that is partly because we see that there is a mandate of all organizations or companies that get federal funding. And Auburn University gets federal funding. They have research grants, and part of their you know, university is funded by the federal government, and he is an employee of the university. Ergo, he does fall under the jurisdiction of the federal mandate. But he has not said he refuses to get the vaccine. He has said that he won't say whether or not he got the vaccine, which is slightly different. And I don't know exactly how that's going to play out. I, I mean, as far as the legal bit goes, I have a pretty good suspicion of how it's going to play out in actuality. But in case you're wondering about this, because you're probably sitting there thinking, but didn't Kay Ivey sign an executive order saying that it negated President Biden's mandate. Okay, so here's the thing. First of all, there are going to be a lot of people that will try to use the supremacy clause explaining that, well, it doesn't matter whether Kay Ivey does it or not, then it's not going to, to have any bearing legally because the, the federal government is supreme to the state government. If you've been a fan of mine for any amount of time, you know I don't subscribe to that legal theory. I'm not an incorporationalist and never have been. I have always believed in the 10th Amendment and that any power not given directly to the federal government through the word of the Constitution, in other words, you can't just make a federal law, you have to actually amend the Constitution if you want to change the powers of the federal government, then that is something that is left up to the states. So first of all, I don't believe that this power is unconstitutional whether or not the state does anything. But if it did, it is the state that is supreme in our country, not the federal government. Remember, the states made the federal government, not the other way around. They are not merely the affiliates of Washington, D.C. The states are sovereign. And as James Madison, the man who actually pinned the Constitution, said, the powers given to the federal government are extremely limited, whereas, and I know that's a paraphrase, but the powers that are given to the states are numerable and unlimited. So essentially, the state is sovereign, the federal government is very limited by the Constitution, it was always designed as a shackle. So actually, I believe that Kay Ivey does have recourse and could override this. So I'm not saying that the Kay Ivey mandate, uh, the, the uh, or mandate ban, I guess it actually would be, on whether or not you have vaccines, I'm not saying that it has no teeth because she's just a governor and Joe Biden is the president. That's not the case I'm making at all because I don't believe that. What I am saying is that this is a legally weak document. Basically, all the, the ban that Kay Ivey signed into law actually says, through her executive order, is that the state of Alabama is not going to go after or enforce the vaccine mandate. That does nothing. And the reason that I say it does nothing is because that is something that is directly going to be done by the federal government. They're going to be in charge of enforcing it. All Kay Ivey is saying is, well, we're going to stay out of their way. We're not going to do the bidding of the federal government when it comes to this mandate. Uh, okay, but that doesn't stop the federal government from punishing organizations and going through and checking their vaccinated status themselves. And so essentially, this executive order does absolutely nothing. And I know that sometimes I'm harsh on Kay Ivey and I get a lot of nasty comments about that, but I'm just telling the truth, y'all. Read the document for yourself and tell me I'm wrong. 
all it says is the state organization as, as an entity. In other words, like ALEA and other law enforcement agencies are forbidden from enforcing the mandate. It does not say that the federal government can't enforce it. A state organization like Auburn University, by the way, the alma mater of our current governor, Kay Ivey, and also because she is the governor, sits on their board of trustees, is apparently going to do nothing about this. The only thing that she has done, and she knows because it's all about optics, it's not about actually doing anything that actually makes a difference. It's all about her just saying some nasty things about Joe Biden so people will vote for her. That's the extent of her concern with this thing. That's all that's going on here, people. She wants the optics of see, being seen as somebody who is opposing the vaccine mandate, but at the end of the day, the executive order she signed is 100% symbolic. It does nothing. What I am really concerned about here is because of this and because of everything that's gone on with the vaccine mandate, we have now, since 2020 and, and all this COVID junk started, we have created a society where we think that we are justified in asking people about their private medical decisions. That is something that bothers me. That now there are large pluralities of people that feel perfectly comfortable saying that such and such person ought to have to tell me whether or not he's had this vaccine or not. In a lot of ways, this pandemic has turned us against our neighbors. It has made us suspicious of our fellow Americans. And that is something that I think is really disturbing. That regardless of whether you stand on whether the vaccines are good or effective or not, and I, I've, I've talked to people that are huge cheerleaders of them, and I've talked to people that are skeptics of them. But one thing that we should all be able to unite around is that those decisions should be primarily between you and your doctor and ultimately up to you regardless of what your doctor thinks. That is your decision. And it's really none of my business. I mean, it's your doctor's business because he acts as a medical advisor, not a, you know, a dictator that can tell you you have to get X, but somebody that advises you on medical decisions that you make, but ultimately the decision should be yours. And that's not really something that I'm all that concerned with. You know, even when I have these debates with people on the vaccine, whether or not they have had it or, or think it's good or whatever, I never ask them, "Is like, well, have you had it? Because I don't care. In every other vaccine in human history, I cared even less because there was nobody saying, well, my vaccine doesn't work if yours, if you haven't been vaccinated. No, I, you know, I, I don't go around asking people if they've been vaccinated for measles. You know why? Because I've been vaccinated for measles, so I don't care. The fact that it has been such a point of contention that there are people that feel perfectly comfortable saying that they ought to get to, or someone in the government ought to be able to ask questions about your medical decisions and make them for you and mandate certain ones. That is the thing that is truly disturbing here. Washington State's uh, Nick Rolovich, I think is the way to pronounce his name, he actually got fired over this. And so that's one of the reasons that a lot of people are worried right now that Harson might face a similar fate for, you know, shrugging off the mandate. Here's what I have to say about that. That was in Washington state. Think about that. Washington state where just about everybody, it's, it's extremely deep blue. And they have all bought into the COVID panic porn. And on top of that, is that really like a, a bastion of football? Now, nah. you're going to put vaccine mandates in ruby red Alabama against college football? Brother, you're going to lose that fight. I don't care if the courts are on your side or not. If Auburn tries to fire Coach Harson over this, they are going to lose that fight hard. I don't think that they're actually going to reach that point. And I have no idea. Maybe Harson's even already got the vaccine. I don't know. Don't really care, like I said. But it's one thing to see a college football coach lose his job in Washington State, where this is their religion. They're so bought into the COVID thing and so bought into the spirit of the age that they might as well, I mean, this would be like, you know, 
the the Baptist denomination in the state of Alabama would be the only equivalent I can come up with. You're going to put college football, which is a pseudo religion in the state of Alabama anyway, against vaccine mandates, which are wildly unpopular everywhere in the country, but even more so in Ruby Red, Alabama. Good luck selling that to the people of Alabama. You're not going to win that fight. Even Alabama fans are going to dismiss that. And I say that, you know, just because they might not want to face Harson <laughs> on the football field. I don't even think they would support something like that. And that's my point. Harson is holding all the cards here. He has all the power, and I think he knows it. I think he realizes that. Even somebody that comes from Boise State, like now that he's in Auburn, the, you know, the mecca of football in the country, and I'm not talking about Auburn, the city specifically. I'm talking about the Southeastern Conference, really anywhere in the Southeast. College football is king, and you put it up against pretty much anything short of, you know, the actual church, you're going to lose that one. People are just too devoted to it for that to happen. So I really do think the best the, the best note to end on is that Harson is doing exactly what he should be doing. And that is keeping his mind on football. Don't get bogged down in this political crap. There is no reason for you to engage in that point. He's not saying, no, I haven't taken it and I don't think it's a good thing. What he has done is he re has remained, at least thus far, completely apolitical about it. He said, like, nope, not going to tell anybody. Because he's too focused on trying to win football games, which is exactly what the coach should do. And I'd say the same thing about Nick Saban, even though I'm not an Alabama fan. Frankly, I think even Nick Saban would say that, even though he's a Democrat. His primary focus is winning football games, and that's the only thing I do care about when it comes to the uh, being the head coach at a college for a football team. I'm not saying that there aren't other concerns as well, but primarily that is the man's job. And getting involved in these petty political arguments, whether I agreed with them or not, that's not really what the head football coach should be doing anyway. And so I applaud Harson for actually taking the, the right stance on this one. If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman, so if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?